Yes, and we're here again uh, with Jazz Matters and my great co-host, Mr. Vaughn Coulter of Jazz Beats Radio. Hello. Uh, Good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> yeah, and we were expecting um, to hear from a, a great musician and an old friend of mine, uh, Miss Terry Harper, and she should be joining us pretty soon. But right now, we'll, um, Vaughn, I want to ask you how things are going over there at Jazz Beats Radio. Oh, things are going just just fine. Um, we've got a lot of growth going on right now. Um, a lot of plans for, you know, tapping into uh, other areas of music on, on the whole for the, for the entire um, cluster radio media family. But Jazz Beats Radio is doing exceptionally well right now. Um, we're averaging quite a bit of listeners now. And uh, so, you know, we've moved into uh, adding um, the podcast from um, Bob Baldwin on Saturdays and also uh, Saturdays and Sundays and added Dave Cause on Saturdays and Sundays as well. So, um, you know, we've, we've, we're moving forward. And uh, the, the biggest thing about it is that, you know, we're still growing and this is only the beginning of providing um, much needed um, jazz content to the radio station. And uh, so, you know, we're looking to be able to take on um, other areas of jazz as well, bring about some more traditional jazz along the way. Um, and uh, so, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a process, but it's a beautiful thing right now. And we're getting ready to move the studios that you visited right. upstairs to the, uh, to the uh, front of the house. Okay. Up there. And uh, so that's going to be uh, 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 an addition that, you know, we're looking forward to because, you know, once you go through that front door, you'll see the studio right, located right in the, in the den area upstairs. So it's going to be just a, a great place to sit down and, and, and play the, the greatest music that has ever been done by the greatest music musicians that have ever existed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, I'm looking forward to being able to sit in that, that, that cubicle and and, uh, you know, just plan some stuff. And, you know, uh, Captain Daryl Davis is planning on doing some mini desk concerts and stuff like that in the future. So, uh, you know, it's just going to be a, a great thing to do and it's a great place to be. Yeah. And I think I'm um, trying to get a hold of uh, Terry. She's just um, signing on. So we'll Good. get to it as soon as she get in. We'll get right on to it. But in the meantime, at Jazz Matters, we are also doing uh, not only the podcast, but we're doing uh, some uh, concerts also online, and we're gonna right. um, we're gonna start that very very soon. So for uh, any other information, you can always go to uh, yesjazzmatters.org, and you can find out information on when they will be. They'll also be posted on Facebook, also. And uh, I'm trying to reach uh, Terry. Can you can you hear us? Yes, I can. Okay. Can you turn your camera on? Okay. Let me see. I thought I did have it on, but let me. Oh, here we go. Yeah, just take the rollers or oh, the curlers out your head. You'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, here we go. Uh, we're here today uh, with Miss um, Terry Harper, great musician, singer, songwriter. Producer, arranger, uh, I'm, I'm running out of stuff. Come on, help me. Uh, that, I, I think you might have ran too far down the list. Too already. far already? Okay, I, I'll make a U-turn. <laughs> and I'll come back and ask you basically, um, Terry, for all those who don't know you, okay. and uh, uh, just, just let them know uh, who you are, where you're from, and how you got into the music. Okay, well, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I started taking lessons when I was about, piano lessons, about when I was about six years old. And uh, took traditional lessons, you know, grew up a little bit playing in church, but, you know, church was a little different when I was growing up. So we did more uh, classical, spiritual, so a little bit of gospel. And just about the time that I became a teenager, gospel just exploded everywhere, including in my church. And so I definitely was interested in that. I guess something must have been pulling me more towards doing something kind of creative anyway, since the gospel thing just really interested me. Um, went away to school, well, not far away, just to UGA, went from Atlanta to Athens. And 
I wound up doing a little singing in church, you know, sing and play, and got more into singing, even though I was supposed to be a music ed major with uh, piano, but um, wound up singing with a little group on the weekends to make a little extra money. And to make an incredibly long story short, it gets longer and longer, um, my now husband wound up coming to UGA um, and he had a band invited me to sing with him. And um, one week his guitarist or his keyboard player couldn't play, uh, couldn't make it. And so his sister, who was my roommate, said, well, why don't you get Terry to play? And he's like, what do you mean get Terry to play? And he's like, she was like, well, she plays piano. She's a piano major. So he asked me, he didn't know that I was playing piano because you know, I was doing a different style of music. And uh, I said, well, yeah, I play piano, but I don't play that kind of music. And slowly he started turning me on to some things that, you know, I could play to kind of fill in. And, you know, that's pretty much it. That's, so I did that like gospel once I heard it. It did something to me that, you know, I really found that music interesting. And of course, that was jazz. At that time, we were doing a little bit of jazz and what was probably, what would probably be called uh, a little bit of smooth jazz and maybe even a touch of R&B, but definitely more jazz at the time. But that led us, uh, led me down the path of, of um, trying to learn more about jazz. Right. Now, uh, I do know that uh, you did record an album once uh, back right. in the 70s. And that was, uh, that was your first project, right? Yeah. And I'm assuming you're talking about um, Phil Morrison's tune? Yeah, Phil Morrison's. Uh, I think he produced it, right? Right. I think, yeah. well... It still produced. I think he did. Um, there were a couple of people involved. Uh, Vinny, was it Vinny O'Neill? I think at the time who might, might have also been involved. Vinny and Doc. Okay. Were also involved in the production of it. But it was a, a song he had written about the city, city because, called "When the Dogwoods Bloom in Atlanta." Right. And we were right. the gig, and we do it on the gig and got great response to it. Everybody kept saying, "Oh, you need to record it. You need to record it." Phil's an excellent songwriter. Right. Definitely. So we got the opportunity. I think. We went in at first and just did a little demo of it. And then later, um, and I'm not even sure how this happened, but somehow or another, I think Vinny O'Neill and Doc became involved in actually producing it. Oh, good. Okay. And we did make that. And it was, it was the, the B side of it, because it was just two record, two uh, songs. It was the one, The Dog Was Blooming in Atlanta, and another song he had written called Down in Rio. Hmm. And uh, somehow there was some kind of, they were at the time, I don't know if this is still true, I think Rio and Atlanta, believe it or not, was some kind of sister cities for some project or some group. Oh, okay. So we, it was uh, two selections and, you know, did that album back then. Yeah, I guess that was that the, that might have been in the 80s, though, I think. Was it the 80s? Okay, 80s. early 80s then. It was early 80s. Yeah, okay. Well, did, um, since, uh, since you've basically gotten... Uh, you know, your foot in the door in the jazz scene. How do you see it? Uh, how has it changed for you in Atlanta? You know, as far as the scene goes, how much you work, where you work, and uh, how much are you doing with um, the musicians? How are you interacting with the musicians? Because I know I had a, a, a little bit of an issue once I left Dante's. Uh, okay. I had to relearn who the musicians were. Yeah. You know, because two generations had passed me. And yeah. uh, and I was like, okay, I got to go find out everybody's name and what they're about, blah, 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 blah. But I want to know how did it change for you? Because I know that you were still doing things. And can you give us an idea of, you know, what, what you felt in, uh, in the past few years since everything now has seemed to be more uh, smooth jazz generated? Yeah, it definitely does seem to be. And I'm not working as much in Atlanta. I'm kind of between Atlanta and Birmingham. Right. Um, so uh, to answer that question, I, I, I'm probably not the one to ask because I'm not working there as much. Mm -hmm. But in some ways, my experience has always been the same. I, ha I haven't really had a long, long-term steady gig. I mean, Dante's was just years for y'all. That was a great gig. Yeah, but was... mine was always, I, my friends have been, just been great to me. Most of the gigs I get are through friends. Somebody calls me, uh, they need to take some time off and, uh, or they need someone to fill in, or they can't do a gig and they turn me on to it. That's pretty much, uh, I've worked for a few agencies way back in the day. 
probably around the time that that, that we made that record. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, friends um, have, have been the ones that have turned me on to jobs. And because I sang and played, sometimes I wind up playing for other singers. I've had, had quite a few singers who call me. Right. And they, they, they need somebody to be, you know, just give me a call. So I've been very fortunate in that, in that sense. Now, as for what's going on now, I'm trying to remember the last time I did something there. Uh, usually they're private functions, so it's not quite the same. And then, you know, my, because, because our kids now play, they will sometimes, oddly enough, hook us up with gigs. It's more their gigs than it is ours. Right. So that's, that's been my experience. But I know that the scene has changed. Even when we go back there now, things are definitely different from the way they used to be. Okay. Now, uh, Vaughn, uh, anything you need to add to this? Well, I'd, I'd like to introduce myself to, to Terry Harper. It's a pleasure to meet you, Terry. It's I'm great. with Jazz Beats Radio here in uh, Georgia. And okay. uh, just wanted to ask you a question. Um, oh, by the way, how was Philip doing? Is everything good with him health-wise? Oh, yeah. He's doing really well. Uh, my middle son is a bass player. Uh, mm -hmm. And he moved up to New Jersey, actually moved to New York just before this whole COVID thing. Mm, okay. And because both Philip and Winard are in that area, when that happened, that's, that's another long story too. They called him and said, Winard called and said, you need to come stay with us. And that's what he did. Winard moves in New Jersey. So oddly enough, he did a gig with the two of them. They're occasionally doing reunion gigs. Okay. And so he's doing well. He's working up there. Um, I think work is starting to pick back up. Um, mm -hmm. you know, it's, I mean, it's still slow, but you know, there are venues up there that are having right. Uh, right. corporate sponsorships. And so they're doing some things. So he's, he's doing good. Philip's doing well. And so is my mm -hmm. Good, good. I was, the, the question that I was going to allude to, and a lot of times we don't really ask this question because 2020 has been a, a pretty tough year. <laughs> <laughs> for a lot of great jazz musicians. We lost quite a bit of them over the over this year. And basically, have you, I mean, you know, with the health of musicians having to travel a lot and do a lot of gigs and 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 be on planes all the time. Right, right. As as a wife of a mu musician, right. how how do we how do you have you come to an understanding about how to keep healthy in in, in these in these when it gets a little bit rough and tumultuous in the, in the lifestyle of a musician? Yeah, that's that's one thing that, um, and, you know, you all may have to excuse me. I, I should have been plugged up because I, I forgot the Zoom kind of drains. I'm going to go get my plug. But um, <laughs> one thing about musicians, period, is that, you know, when you're younger, you just think you can burn the candle at both ends and in the middle. And, mm -hmm. and you tend to do that. A lot of people tend to do that. Um, hopefully this whole thing will make all of us realize that we just need to take better care of ourselves, even if it means turning some things down. Uh, mm. One of my sons had, had an occasion to do something that involved traveling and he was, you know, real gung ho about doing it. But when I heard the deal, and I certainly haven't traveled to the extent that he is, I'm like, you don't need to do that. They, they, you know, they, they, it's a good paying gig, but they still are treating you the way you need to be treated, you know? Right. Right. So, uh, and in this day and age, you know, flying overseas to do a rehearsal and flying back and then flying back over there. Well, you know, they, just, they just need to put you up over there, you know, just to do the gig. Right. It's, it's too much. And these are, unfortunately, you know, people don't realize the kind of sacrifices that musicians uh, make on a day to day basis. Gigging is, it's, it's no joke, you know, uh, trying to, um, balance certainly a home and family and even if you're single just like you said just keeping your health together so that you can do the next gig and do the best performance you right. know, give the best of yourself it's a challenge mm -hmm. it really is um at this point like i said i'm not doing that that much and i'm actually here in birmingham to kind of be supportive of my husband who has who's thank god is coming out of some health issues mm -hmm. it was the same thing we were working you know you work late and you if you have a family, you still got to get, live on that side of the clock. I'm sure Edwin can tell you about that. I mean, being a, you right, know, right. a, a husband, a father, and a full-time musician, you know, you play the God only knows what time. Kids got to be at school at eight. Well, they used to have to be at school at eight. That's even changed now. You know, yeah. so it's, it is a struggle, but if you can stay focused and um, 
and sometimes you might have to let a few things go that you might really want to do. You, have, you kind of have to whittle things down to what works best for your, your health and your schedule and your family. Right. Exactly. Yeah, now as far as that health issue, um, it is real good to, to learn how to let things go at an early age. Yes. Simply because, you know, it gives you the, uh, that, that, that sense of, of uh, urgency to protect yourself and to look out for yourself. Uh, I know most uh, young musicians, including myself, we didn't turn anything down. Right. We would, we would, we would play, we, we can go and play in a cave. It didn't even matter. But the thing about it was, um, as you grow as a musician, even the musician, say, uh, Terry, as young as, um, as, young as your, your sons are, uh, they still need, need to understand that, you know, they want to do this for a long time. So they got to take care of themselves and just turn some things down. Now, some of the opportunities, are, they may seem to be too good to pass up, right? But a lot of times, you know, passing them up, you know, you can focus more on what you are doing and where you are doing it. You don't have to. I, I remember a conversation I had with Buster Williams. Uh, we were talking and he was asking me what I was doing. I told him, well, I'm doing a thing on the road, blah, blah, this. And he said, why? He said, you can do everything you want right here. You don't even have to do that. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so I kind of thought about it for a long time. And that was really one of the main reasons I came off the road uh, right. and, and, and I walked right into the, the Dante situation right. was because I've, I, I, I remembered what he had said, what we had talked about. And I'm like, you know, I ain't even got to go and chase this. You know what I'm saying? Cause that's what you're doing. You know, yeah. you, you're, you're chasing stuff and I can just stay right here in this one place. Right. And uh, although I didn't, I wasn't quite sure it was going to last that long, but you know, it, but it did. So the thing is, um, it's definitely your health. You have to think about it at a certain age anyway, because you'll see the things once you travel overseas a couple of dozen times, you'll realize that, um, okay, you've pretty much done that. Now, what do you do? You know, yeah. and, and it's all about you after that, you know, yeah. and the only way you can do you is you got to be healthy enough to do it. That's just that simple. But uh, Terry, had you been working on any uh, original projects uh, in the last couple of years? Not really. We've done um, gotten a few uh, a chance to do a few things here because uh, Danny's on staff at a college here uh, doing a jazz program. So you know, we had been once a year doing a concert here uh, for that program, and that that's always been nice. And also just trying to develop his his jazz students and the jazz program here um, from the ground up. They, they have, uh, they did not have a, an official jazz major and that's what he's been developing. So I haven't really been doing uh, any projects. I've, I've done some gigging since I've been here, but, but not, not many projects now. Right. No. Okay. Uh, now at, over at Jazz Beats Radio, uh, where Vaughn, of course, is the DJ, uh, they usually have a lot of uh, uh, different types of uh, jazz. I could say it like that. It's pretty eclectic, I, I would say that. And the thing is, they, but they have some great hosts over there. And um, Vaughn would probably be, be able to see if he can get an interview with you over there at Jazz Beats. You know, okay. b because, uh, and, and anytime, you know, you're back on this side, just let me know, you know, and we might be able to fix that. We might be able well, to I figure would love that for out. that to happen. Yeah, okay. I would really love for that to happen. Okay, well, great. Thank you very much. Thank you for the uh, for the offer for the invitation. That would be Absolutely. great. Absolutely, and and you can join the group. You know, because uh, Edwin and I are just two brothers out there talking about jazz, and <laughs> you can be right. part of the group and just right. sit there and you know, yeah, we can we can converse talking about you know the music and all that and. Um, cause if the platform is primarily, or at least how I perceive it to be, it's going to, it's, it's a, it's a platform to the, for the preservation of, of, of the art form, right. you know, right. and, uh, I don't just limit it to smooth jazz. Uh, I'm, I'm across the board, you know, classic, uh, mainstream bebop, hip, a uh, 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 hard bop, okay. contemporary, 
you know. Okay. Um, so, you know, I, it crosses all genres of, of the sound. Okay. All Even right. Brazilian and Latin jazz. So I'm not going to leave those two out either. <laughs> okay. Okay. And you know, as, as we were talking, I, I did do something, uh, Danny and I both did about a month and a half ago. Uh, first part of August, a friend was doing, um, trying to do home concerts or was doing home concerts. So we, we did that same thing. It was a Zoom uh, concert right. and right. ones uh, to do it. So we had a few challenges, you know, with the sound, you know how Zoom is. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, but, you know, that was, we tried doing that. It, it, the, the experience was, uh, was pretty good. It, it, like everything else, you find out some things you need to definitely nail down, and, and especially with technology. But I, I, I guess more things are going this way, at least for the time being, and maybe even after this is over with. Maybe. Well, I, yeah, we all kind of figure it's going to last, you know, most, through most of next year anyway. And, uh, uh, and, but we, we still have um, this option, which is, you know, the, the uh, virtual concept. So right. we're just like at Jazz Matters, we're developing that, you know, all the time. We're always discussing it and we're doing things. Right. So the thing is, um, we'll be, like I was uh, talking to Vaughn a little earlier, we will definitely be doing our um, concerts uh, uh, online. And there'll be, as a matter of fact, we already have several that we've already picked to do very soon. And you can always um, check them out at uh, yesjazzmatters.org and you will find the schedule on whatever uh, performance is going to be there. And, you know, uh, Terry, it's pretty much basically right now we are doing mainly uh, residential talent. And uh, but we like to get you to do one, and, okay. uh, and I think that it'll be really good because we've, like you said, we've ironed out some of the re the problems right. of doing that by you know doing experiments and so forth. So we kind of know now we pretty much got our foot in the door how to do this thing. Okay. And uh, but we like to get you, um, you know, whenever you got a chance to, you know, uh, come over and we can definitely uh, do a concert featuring you. As a matter of fact, I need to um, let you know, I, w I really want to feature, feature you on the Women of Jazz uh, concert that we have uh, lined up. And if you would, you know, uh, I'll just give me a call and let me know what your schedule is so okay. that we can work this thing out. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, because like as I was telling Vaughn, you're a great musician and singer, and uh, Jazz Matters really just wants to give you the platform, you know, to do what you do, and oh. you can do it any way you want to do it. You know what I'm saying? It's on you. You know what I'm saying? Don't leave it up to to anybody else. You know, if you need this person or that person to work with you, that's fine. You know, no problem. Okay. And uh, we're getting short on time. Uh, like I told you, it runs real fast. So uh, what we're going to do is uh, let the, uh, can you, let, do, is there any way people can get up with you, Terry, uh, through any kind of website or anything on social media? Um, you know, I'm not a social media person, bro. Uh, and I don't you know. You are right way. now? <laughs> 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 so you that, so you that told, you told the tale, right? <laughs> uh, all right. I actually, I think I do have a Facebook page that I never checked <laughs> until somebody calls and says, I, I put something on your phone. Well, you have, a, you have an email address. Yeah, I do have an email address. Okay, you give them your email address. And my email address is Glenn Harper, and that's G-L-E-N-N-H-A-R-P-E-R-5-4 at gmail.com. Cool. And uh, Vaughn, you let people know where to catch you. Yes, sir. Um, Jazz Beats Radio, jazzbeatsradio.com. That is our web page. Um, I can also be found at uh, Instagram at Vaughn Coulter. And uh, my new um, Twitter uh, page is Ain't Nothing But Soul. And it's uh, Ain't Nothing Buts One. Ain't Nothing Buts One. Okay. okay. And of course, you know, Jazz Matters, you can always get them at yesjazzmatters.org. And I am Edwin Williams. And 
Terry, it was good talking to you and seeing you again. It's been a while. Sure uh, has. And, uh, and, I, and, and it's great to see you and hear you again. And glad you're doing well, you know, with all this going on. But, uh, you know, it's got to end at some point. So uh, just let me know also what your schedule would be like uh, for the concert. And okay. that way uh, we can go ahead and set it up and everything. And then if everything will be, you know, just whatever you want. We'll talk about it and we'll deal with that as soon as you can. But it's a series that we're going to be doing through Jazz Matters called Women in Jazz. And um, for Vaughn and myself, Terry, uh, thanks. And we'll see you all again. All right. Thank all right. you. Thank you. All right. Bye.